So how bad do you think this carabiner is? Oh, this is really bad. It's super, super sharp. Super, super sharp. It's not sharp. only like a little bit like worn out, it's super sharp. Where did you yeah. got it from? From a crack. From the crack. Yeah. So this is a real carabiner from yes. real crack. Yes. There was an accident in this crack and uh, the climber um, died. Oh, yeah. yeah. As you can see, it's, it's really sharp. I want to feel it. Yeah. It doesn't feel that sharp for me. I mean, it's not a knife, of yeah, course. Yeah, 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 but... But like for a rope, this is enough. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know about you, but personally, I never had to witness anybody completely snapping his or her climbing rope during a real climbing fall. But unfortunately, it happens. So... People who watch my channel and have fear of falling, mm -hmm. watch this video and they then... will have more fear of falling <laughs> after it. <laughs> now, if you're one of these more sensitive people, don't worry. Just imagine me holding your hand as I guide you through this video and everything is gonna be fine. Okay, jokes aside, this is a part two of my conversations with rope experts from Mammoth, where in a part one, I showed you how a soft spot in your climbing rope can easily end up in a broken sheath on a realistic climbing fall. We broke the sheath after two falls. <laughs> and you <laughs> said it's gonna last. Something like this. Unfortunately, I've seen this way too many times. The good news, as we saw in that video, that even with completely broken sheath, the rope was still hard to snap. The bad news is that the coarse strands are way easier to cut. Somebody said of course it's easy to cut when you use a Swiss army knife. So this is not a Swiss army knife, it's actually quite dull. This is 80 kilograms and this is a rope. Okay, that was not that hard. Let's get rid of the sheath. Okay, so now the climber is hanging only on coarse strands. Let's see how hard it is to cut the coarse strands. So if during the fall you would lose your sheath and then your rope would run across a sharp edge. So assuming that you take care of your rope and it's in a good condition, then you still have two quite often overlooked dangers. So first is all the equipment that your rope goes through. <laughs> So this was a new quick draw before I did that. And as you can see, the paint at this point is already wearing off. And if I would continue doing that, or I would just go climbing and take falls on this quick draw, this part would develop a groove, something like this, or in some cases even worse. So a little groove after some time of climbing is definitely normal and usually it's not a problem since the rope makes it nice, smooth and round. Usually, but not always. Like in the story where the climber died, the situation was like this. The route was traversing under the roof and the crux was after a second quick draw. That's where everybody kept falling and this quick draw probably had a nice and round edge. However, this quick draw only seen a sideways motion, sideways friction from the rope and nobody ever fell on it. Until one day a climber took a fall and his rope was cut on this quick draw. Do you test how your ropes are resistant to cutting and are there any standards? Start with the second question first. So 
And no, there are no standard tests for the cut resist. I mean, in the standard today, this default test, which I think everyone has seen a million times, but here the rope falls over a clamp, that's very similar to a new carabiner. So to demonstrate how bad a sharp carabiner can be, we took a brand new rope and rigged a realistic fall scenario. This is 9.5 brand new rope. Yeah. First of all, brand new rope. Entire sheaf of the rope got wrecked. The forcing area is really, it's nothing hard. It I'm actually shocked by yeah, this, like, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. Well, now we change to the one the old rope. rope. Let's see what happens if your rope is actually fuzzy and old. So we take the same old rope, we find another spot which is quite fuzzy. It's definitely people would still climb on this, soft but not completely bad. Will it snap? No? no? You think it will not snap? No. How many lives the core will lose? Two strands will be snapped of the core. Okay. And the sheep. His guess is two out of eight. <laughs> So half of the core strand snapped. So on the old rope, half of the strand yeah. snapped. On the new one, Nothing. none. Mm -hmm. It's still good to know that even the old, old rope kind of survived. But if the fall would be any yeah, bigger... Just a little bit bigger, I mean, then it would snap. Be careful with sharp edges. <laughs> A couple of years ago, UIAA tried to implement a cut-resistant test mm -hmm. where the rope had a dynamic fall over a sharp edge. I think it was a year or two on the market and then it, it, they cancelled it because the, the testing, it did not work. Mm. Now, yeah, Ilri, they have their own test uh, method and we are also looking into this actually since a long, long time. The rope takes a dynamic fall over a granite edge and slides over this granite. Oh. Edge. So at the moment it's up to the brands themselves to do their internal testing. There is no universal standard. Correct. It will come one day. So now the climber is hanging only on four strands of the rope and we are gonna show how much it takes to completely snap the rope if you just barely touch with the knife. Oh. I cannot believe it. It's crazy! And he just like yeah. he barely yeah. touched with the sharp edge and it snapped. Yeah. This is the the carabiner we did the test with now. It doesn't feel like a knife, but the groove is very deep. It's definitely at the edges it's sharp, but it's not something that I would expect out of snapping the rope like yeah. that. So please take care of your carabiners. And if you're climbing on fixed carabiners, yeah. Make sure to check them as well. It's a deep groove, but somehow I was expecting a an, an sharper edge, to be honest. Because it still feels kind of smooth. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know, definitely. Good to know. So, in addition to ropes chewing through your quick draws, you should also be aware how and where you clip your quick draws. So for example, this one, the rope should be only clipped to the blue carabiner. And if you don't know why, you should watch my masterclass on quick draws. Let's say for whatever reason I want to connect myself to the bolt using a quick draw. If I would do this, this is actually a really bad idea because the bolt can leave a sharp cut on this carabiner and this carabiner later will get in contact with the rope. So instead of that, do the opposite. The carabiner which is designed to go to the bolt goes to the bolt and the rope end goes to something soft. There was also for example an accident in Switzerland in mountain guide aspirant um, courses. One mountain guide lowered two person on one strand, 8.7 millimeter diameter. He lowered them both on this single strand and then like one and a half meters below his feet there was like an edge but really like we, we had a look at it, it was not a sharp edge. I would say it's it's just like a normal edge which you find like in every you crack. Will scare like my viewers. <laughs> the whole rope um, got got cut. And this brings us to a second danger for climbing ropes: sharp rock formations. So if you are a sensitive person, now it's a time to hold my hand. So 
So the climber actually survived. And this is an old video posted by British Mountaineering Council. And I guess the clip speaks for itself. Do you have any statistics on accidents that happen due to snapping climbing ropes? So the best statistic that I know of is the one from the German Alpine Club. They actually kept a register uh, of all the rope accidents that took place, I think it was for the last 60 years. There they have 53 cases where they know why the rope broke. And what's the most common cause? Sharp edges. Sharp edges. Yeah. 66%. So when the fall happens and you swing over the sharp edge? Either you take a fall over a sharp edge or you're lowered over a sharp edge or you're, uh, you know, you taking some kind of swing over a sharp mm -hmm. edge. But it's not only the rock formation, it can also be due to carabiners, sharp carabiners or other metal objects. And speaking of statistics, I asked my Instagram followers to send me stories, pictures, videos about rope damage. And while I got no complete snaps, I got this one, which looks like it got a lot of abrasion. And this one was hit by a rock with just few strands left. And this is my favorite one. It was actually a brand new rope, only three falls, and the owner claims that there was no sharp edges and the quick draws were fine. The only catch that this rope was 8.9 millimeters thickness only. Do you see a difference in cut resistance among thicker ropes versus thinner ropes? Oh yes. So, I mean, if you want a higher safety margin, I mean, the thicker the rope is, the better. So how much safer is, let's say, 9.8 rope compared to 9.5 or 9.2? So it turns out Mammoth already did the testing on this, where they used the same sharp carabiner and checked at what fall height the rope will snap. And these were the results. So we had fall heights up to five meters and we tested like different uh, rope diameters and like a half and twin rope. And to no surprise, thicker ropes perform better with double ropes being the safest. And this actually brings me to a current trend where people buy ultra skinny ropes thinking that they are the best. Maybe if you're not at that level where it's like so, so important for you, every gram, every little uh, millimeter of the rope, maybe it's not important to buy the thinnest rope you can on the market. I mean, if you can, you, I would recommend having two ropes. No? You have the, the thicker one for, for working out the roots and the one you can also use when you know how you feel like, oh, this root could be a little bit uh, sketchy there with some sharp edges. Then you take the thick rope and then you have a, a thinner rope which you might use when you yeah, already checked out the route and you want to have a really good go in sanding the route. So this video is not sponsored, but a little disclaimer is that I got these ropes for free from Mammoth. And I have to say that climbing my hardest projects on this ultra skinny 9.0 rope was really nice. However, for anything new, unknown, my go-to rope is 9.5 millimeters thickness. And if I would have to choose just one rope to own, this would be it. And I guess if I would be climbing in some sketchier places or I would be heavier, I hope not, maybe I would consider even thicker rope than that. It's pretty obvious that falls like this should be avoided at all cost. But in general, if the rope is running across a sharp edge, Soft dynamic belaying is actually very important because if the belayer takes really hard that increases the peak force on the rope and also the damage will be concentrated on a smaller area of the rope. So more things to go wrong. Okay, let's change gears. You guys asked me what about unicorn ropes? Sounds almost like unicorn. So a unicorn rope has its core and sheath strands kind of hooked together. So this is not a unicorn rope and if I would pull the sheath you can see that they are completely independent and this would not happen on unicorn ropes. If a rope is developed well the sheath and the core are perfectly matched together so they can move 
very well Why don't together. you hook them together? I saw some brands doing that. Is there any benefit of doing one or other way? You can do this, but nowadays the ropes are so well designed that, uh, for example, chef's slippage does not occur that often anymore. Actually, on most of the ropes, not most, on all of our ropes, we have a chef slippage of zero. And this is without intertwining the chef with the core. What does it mean, zero chef slippage? If you pull the rope over an edge back mm -hmm. and forth, yeah. how much the core would move to one side or the other. But if it stays in place, then it's well balanced. Yeah, I've seen some ropes lose the core in the ends of the rope. Yes. The ends get completely soft. Yeah, so this is actually what chef slippage is, is that the core and the chef um, don't move at the same pace, basically. Mm, so your robes don't do that? No. So as I understand, intertwining the core with sheath doesn't add much benefit for sport climbers. However, if you are ascending a rope, let's say jumaring a rope, and your sheath gets cut, it can slide down kind of well it can slide down here this can happen but this sliding would not happen on a unicor rope so yeah i don't know if i'm missing some benefits of unicor ropes for sport climbers let me know i'm super curious all right i hope that your fear of falling is under control and maybe you even learned something and I'm gonna release more interviews with Mammoth engineers about some more geeky topics about climbing ropes. And that's gonna be exclusive for people who are supporting my channel. So if you are interested in that uh, or you just want to support me, consider visiting my website. And thank you so much. And thank you Mammoth for inviting me and I hope to come back one day. Why is that? Why some ropes get stiffer and some <laughs> softer? Well, to answer that question, like textiles is a very tricky and moody raw material to work with. Moody? It's very moody.